knowledge. So I guess that more than the founding of Catholicism, we should talk first about the founding of Christianity. Of course, after people, after the Orthodox Church ran off, then Protestantism was created. But now, in the end, as you can see, they have taken back the, the, whole, uh, the whole Christianity in their hands. And I don't think there is one Christian leader today in the world that opposes the Pope, even if he's from another denomination. The ecumenicalism, the World Council of Churches that the Rockefeller set up has been successful. And then now the very doctrine of the Bible itself is being banned, is being outlawed, is being shredded. Let's go ahead and take yes. one more phone call. Fabian in FEMA Region 5. You're on the air, Fabian. Yes. Hello, gentlemen. Um, I just wanted to add to the, the staged stuff, like the little girl who was able to break security and come over and see the Pope and all that stuff. Uh, something very similar happened uh, last week. I did send a news tip uh, on Monday, but I don't know if, you know, my stuff went into the spam or whatever, but NBC News staged another similar event live on TV on the 16th, where we got Richard Engel out there in the midst of all the migrants trying to break through, you know, uh, the the gates and the fences, and just lo and behold, this pregnant refugee walks by and collapses right at his feet. And lo I mean, and behold, the baby drowns. So they stage it for the news cameras. Yeah, I mean, this is so. This is totally transparent, totally sickening. But instead of outraging the public, they love it. They love being conned. At least some people do. Uh, or maybe it's going to blow up in their face. Uh, thank you for the call, Fabian. What do you think about his statement? I think that everybody in America these days, uh, while the Pope is visiting, uh, is uh, showing uh, the real self. We are seeing really scenes that are out of this world. I mean, these people, to be close to the Pope, will do anything. I mean, like he's some kind of God. And uh... We've been having some phone issues today, obviously. Uh, but we just lost uh, Zagami's phone. Can we go back to Skype audio? And then we have Skype videos so you can finish up. All right. Well, well, we will uh, try to finish up with him and then come back with our guest on geoengineering. Uh, Leo, can you hear me? All right. Well, we've lost him, but that was an important interview uh, that we just had with uh, Leo Zagami. Uh, you can find his book, The Last Pope, just by searching it and going to his publisher that we had on screen earlier. Now, we're going to go to break. We're getting them on 20 minutes late, but we'll go five minutes in the next hour. Then we have a fourth hour of overdrive today. Hosted by Anthony Gucciardi, I'll tell you about that later. It's going to be a hot hour. But uh, here's the headline. Earth is 20% darker, say experts. Now, this is from 2003, and they claim it's jet trails that are doing it. That's NASA. Now, I thought I'd show you that just to give you an idea of what even accidental geoengineering can do from their words. And clearly, California is having its weather manipulated. This is what the age of weather weapons is all about. We're going to delve deeply into it straight ahead. Even from the outside, it's clear. The hundreds showing up beat to a different drum. But stepping inside this packed Reading Auditorium is like walking into another world. Here, outlandish ideas like weather warfare and climate engineering, in other words, weather control, are accepted as basic fact. Climate engineering is the greatest single assault on the environment ever launched by humanity, without question. Dane Wigginton, lead researcher for Geoengineering Watch, is sounding the alarm. It's a responsibility. It's not an option. It's an obligation. Look in the center, between the wing plumes. His group claims this grainy, shaky video is part of a mountain of evidence they've uncovered. Means we have a secondary disbursement. Showing shadowy government forces are using planes to secretly spray fine particles of heavy metals like aluminum into the sky. The tankers fly at lower altitudes because they carry the larger payload. The purpose, they believe, is to block some of the sun's direct rays from reaching the Earth, a desperate attempt to slow global warming. The list of corroborating material we have is immense, including lab tests that prove the same elements used, named, in geoengineering patents, aluminum, barium, 
and other heavy metals are raining down on us in absolutely massive quantities. If you're skeptical, this won't help. Dane claims the spraying he says is happening off the coast of California comes with an incredibly severe side effect. The heavy metal particles, he says, are blocking rainfall, effectively steering our rain somewhere else, leading to their shocking truth. Climate engineering, they say, is to blame for the harshest recorded drought in California right. history. That's Nobody CBS 13 that we're analyzing there. Dave Whittington joins us right now. His background is solar energy. I've been involved in documentary films that he's been in. He was formerly employed by Bechtel Power Corps. Bechtel's been involved in weather engineering. He worked for one of the uh, first commercial solar electric facilities in the U.S. He's an off-the-grid residence located on a 1,600-acre wildlife preserve in northern California wilderness. One of the founding members of geoengineeringwatch.org and the staff writer for articles there, geoengineeringwatch.org. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. But the reason I wanted to get him on is CBS News Sacramento and others have been picking it up going to city council members, going to town halls with 200, 300, 400 people, you know, inside wearing suits and ties, scientists talking about this. So they show some college kids in a drum circle outside and go, oh, look, they're kooks. And they selectively don't show the fact that we have the patents, we have the admissions, we have Secretary of Defense Cohen in Army Times 97 admitting it. Uh, we have Bill Gates running a secret program for the government, $4 million, $5 million a year. Uh, we have the father of weather weapons admitting they were doing it back in the 70s. We have the London Guardian. Earth is 20% darker, NASA says, 2003. 2014, that's now 30% darker. You can simply type in to a search engine satellite photos of jet trails over North America, and it shows the whole continent covered. We know there's ice crystals. We know those are natural, but they persist now. We have the patents where it's added to the jet fuel and dispersed, and there's other special aircraft. And clearly, we've had weather folks on, we've had meteorologists on, who've looked at the water, the, the, the storms coming in that would normally dump water in California, Oregon, and, and, and Seattle up in Washington, and it's being killed before it gets there. It's being dumped into the ocean. You put the salts in, you put the ionizers in, you put the nuclei in, and it makes it come down early. It's 101. So tell us what's coming up in the next 35 minutes or so, sir. Good job getting more and more attention. Uh, they're really upset that they can't spend this, uh, Dane. Well, thank you for giving your your voice to this issue so often, Alex, and all you've done for the, the greater good. And on this particular issue, this is a noose around our neck. And this is what so many people need to realize, that whatever other challenges we face, if we don't face this challenge, nothing else will matter soon. And in regard to the California drought, that is a one plus one equals two equation. When we know they're aerosolizing off the U.S. West Coast, too many condensation nuclei, as you stated, and they can not only reduce the rain before it arrives, they can also migrate the rain directly over the top of us by introducing too many condensation nuclei, Alex. And they're, they're doing that in conjunction with the ridiculously resilient ridge. This is a new meteorological term that refers to the high pressure that blocks all the rain completely. That's a result of the ionosphere heater. So they have several means of blocking the rain from the West, but they're wreaking havoc all over the globe, Alex. And, and as you know, we're going to come back. Dubai is in the BBC with these uh, microwaves making it rain. They can also stop it from raining. So this is old technology. We know they've got that going on as well. We know they're shutting down our power plants, doing everything they can to, to shut America down. If they kill the California breadbasket, America's done. And it looks like they've been successful. We're going to come back, give you the floor to walk through all these exhibits. If you're not a TV viewer, you should be, because you're going to see a lot of evidence. Infowars.com forward slash show. Send the feed to friends and family. We're on the Here's the simple synopsis. Anyone with a search engine can find Library of Congress, United Nations treaties, the patents, the films that have been made. So many documentaries, though, act like it's a mystery that they're going to solve. It's like, the mystery. Does the Washington, D.C. Capitol exist? Let's find out. And two hours later, you find out, yes, it exists. No. There's no having to go prove the Pacific Ocean exists. We know it's been discovered. We've seen it. It's been documented for thousands of years. Or the Atlantic. Or the Indian. Ocean. But the establishment treats us like pygmies who you know, are out in the middle of Africa or something 
and have never seen civilization. And they go, there's no chem trailing. There's no weather modification going on. When it was declassified a decade ago, I had been living since the father weapons on, weather weapons on. They could take a clear sky in Vietnam and rain 10 feet of water anytime they wanted on the Ho Chi Minh Trail with less than seven aircraft. And that was with primitive technology. They could create hurricanes. They could kill hurricanes. They could strengthen them. They could weaken them. They could steer them. They could control them. He came on my show on radio and TV and then got a visit by Homeland Security would never talk to me again. Because he got declassified. I got his name. I got him on. Fox News picked it up after I had him on. I mean, they got upset. Stanford Research Institute, 1967, certified with the Naval Weapons Laboratory that they could create and control hurricanes with just aerosol spray, but with giant solar panel arrays and magnetic arrays and microwave arrays, they could completely control it. Project to turn the desert green trials in Qatar. And again, they're using microwave systems to do that as well. But then when we talk about, hey, there's a giant Department of Energy program and all the admissions under scientific terms, it's never called chemtrail. You never find a FEMA camp saying, where's the FEMA camp document? It's not called a FEMA camp. It's called an emergency center under the Establishment Act. It's called a civilian inmate labor camp. It's called a resettlement program, Army War College. Then you can read all about it and how they're going to break up families, put us in different FEMA camps. It's at Army.mil. All the time, folks call in or try to show up at the office or send me letters going, I didn't believe it. I looked it up. Army.mil. They're building the camps. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But see, it's called another name, not a FEMA camp. So Dave Whittington uh, who heads up geoengineeringwatch.org, again, has really been getting folks uh, for years uh, concerned about this. Now that the drought is driving people out, the question is, what is geoengineering for folks that don't know? What is the evidence? We should walk through it. If you're a TV viewer, you can see as we go along here just what we threw together today uh, for this interview that walks through exactly what's happening and the history of this situation. We have the weather and climate modification manual that shows the aircraft nozzles, satellite images, and how to control the weather. Uh, we have the tree die-off from the aluminum dioxide. Uh, we have the uh, NASA satellite photos making the Earth darker. Uh, we have the geoengineering patents. We have it all. That's what's crazy is that it's so admitted. So, sir, you've got the floor. Break it down for us exactly what we're facing and why would they want to kill the breadbasket of America? Everything you stated, Alex, is spot on. In regard to climate engineering, which is weather warfare, there's no delineation between the two. Weather warfare amounts to biological warfare because all of us on the ground have to breathe, inhale, and absorb what's being sprayed above us. So in regards to the California drought, again, the equation is simple. When you aerosolize on this scale, you radically disrupt the hydrological cycle. And I would challenge any of your listeners or encourage your listeners to look at disseminations I did two years ago, for example, engineered drought catastrophe target California, and ask yourself if that data from two years ago wasn't exactly on target. Now, the reason it's on target is because as they, as they continue these programs, it couldn't not happen. That same data was presented to Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor of California at the state capitol by myself nearly two years ago. There's no question they know what's going on. There's no question Lieutenant Governor knows, uh, people in the EPA know. I've had high-level EPA meetings. I've been in Barbara Boxer's office, spoken in front of the California Energy Commission, who knows they're losing 20% of the state's rain, 20 to 40% from, quote, particulates of unknown origin. This is the biggest elephant in the room, Alex, by far. And the planetary disruption it's causing is far beyond what most people imagine to be possible. But as you correctly outlined, this weather warfare, and that's exactly what it is, it's not for the common good. There is no benevolence in the climate engineering programs. It's weather warfare, which amounts to biological warfare, again, because of the contamination. And I would encourage people to simply look at the amount of data we have, the photographs of the nozzles, as you just shown. When people argue, is this or isn't it going on, we have the historical records, as you correctly outlaid. We have photographs of the retrofit nozzles mounted even on commercial planes. We have photographs of these tankers spraying, shutting on and off at altitude, military tankers, KC-10s, KC-135s, C-17s. 
There's no argument that this is going on, Alex. There certainly isn't. And 